Welcome to Discovering Victory, a monthly podcast ministry of America's Keswick. My name is Graham Wilson, and with me today is Dr. Bill Welty, President and CEO. Bill, welcome to the podcast. Graham, it's good to be with you again. It is good to be here. So we're in the month of April. Um, Next month, we have two very exciting events that I want to talk about. Um, First is on May 7th. It's our Family Freedom Walk. Why don't you tell everyone a little bit more about that event? Well, it's a special day committed to helping us to raise funds for the Ministry of Addiction Recovery. Mm. Uh, This year for the Colony of Mercy as well as Barber's Place. We're celebrating the first year of Barber's Place. And so folks can come that day. They can walk. They can rock on rocking chairs. They can swim laps in the pool. But the whole purpose of that day is to just have a lot of fun uh, asking folks to get sponsors so that we can raise money for the Family Freedom Walk. Uh, The goal this year is $50,000, and uh, last year the Lord brought over and above that, so we're looking forward to a great day. The sun's going to be shining. You're going to be swimming, or you're going to be rocking, or what are you doing? I think I'm going to walk this year. Okay, well that would be good. Yeah, 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 I thought it would be. Um, And then further out in the month, we have a very special event also called our Memorial Day Weekend Conference, um, who has a a speaker named Dr. Woodrow Kroll. Um, and he'll also be our podcast speaker for today. Um, that's always an exciting event here at Keswick. It's it's really our kickoff to the summer. Um, there's a lot of buzz in the air with that event. Uh, what's our theme for this summer? Facing the future with confidence. Mm. And our theme verse is Philippians 1, 6. And it's going to be great. Woodrow Kroll is one of my favorite Bible teachers. Uh, he served for many years on Back to the Bible. And uh, we're looking forward to his ministry. It's going to be a great weekend. A lot of fun. And uh, always good to kick off the summer season. Awesome. Now, if you would like more information about Memorial Day weekend, uh, you can visit our website at www.americaskeswick.org slash summer, and you can find information about availability and rates. Well, let's dive right into this and check out the first clip from Dr. Woodrow Kroll. Here's something you'll recognize. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. In Psalm 37, we're thinking about how to go the distance with God and what what God puts in our pathway and how we need to adjust the way we live and the way we think so that we can think the way God thinks. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So last night we talked about the first two verses. Do not fret because of evildoers. God doesn't want us to sit around and twiddle our thumbs and be concerned of the evil that's in this world. That doesn't mean we aren't concerned. It just means we don't sit around and do nothing. We don't sit around and fret about it. There's more to life than fretting. So it says, do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. When your neighbor doesn't play by the rules and prospers, God says, don't be jealous of him. Verse 2, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, sickled down like the grass, and they will wither as the green herb. Now, here's the alternative to that. Here's the flip side of that coin. Don't fret. Don't be jealous. Instead, verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Now, that's what I want to talk about tonight, trusting in the Lord. What does it mean when the Bible says trust in the Lord? Well, of all the possible meanings for this word, the word in Hebrew is a word that means uh, to have confidence in something. You know, have real genuine confidence to feel safe, uh, to be free from care, to have confidence in God that even though things look really messed up in this world right now, that God will make all things right one day. Have confidence in Him. King Hezekiah was said, he trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him there was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. Why? He trusted in the Lord God of Israel. That was the key to Hezekiah being blessed by God. 
Psalm 25, verses 1 and 2. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul, O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, let not mine enemies triumph over me. I feel a song coming on, don't you? But the truth in that song is that if you trust God, you don't have to fret. And God doesn't want us to fear. God doesn't want us to fret. He doesn't want us to be jealous of those who prosper in their iniquity. He wants us instead to trust him and do good. We'll get to that part in just a minute. So when is it that you should trust God? Uh, What are the occasions in your life? What are you going through right now? in which you find it difficult, perhaps, to trust God? What are some of the situations in life when you need to trust God? Uh, Several of them came to my mind immediately. First of all, you need to trust God when you worry and you don't even know what it is that's worrying you. Now, don't look at me that way. Uh, Most of you have been there. Some of you are there right now. You're very concerned about something, and when someone asks you, what are you concerned about? I don't know. You might as well be a singer. I don't know. <laughs> Trust in God when you're worried and don't even know what it is that worries you. Now listen, you all know the name D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody was very famous for saying, you can go to heaven first class or you can go to heaven second class. You know, if you're on your way to heaven, you're going to get to heaven anyway. But how you go is important, too. Moody says, go first class or go second class. The choice is yours. So what's the difference between first class and second class? Well, he says, first class is, I will trust and not be afraid. That's Isaiah 12, verse 2. I will trust and not be afraid. That's first class. Second class is Psalm 56, verse 3. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. See the difference? You have your option. You can either trust God and not be afraid, or you can wait till you're fearful and then finally trust God. One is first class, friends. One is second class. So we need to learn to trust God even when we're worried about something we don't even know what it is that's worrying us. It's interesting. I read a report by psychologists on worry one time, and and this is what it says. I have no way to prove that these statistics are right. It's just what the psychologist magazine said. Forty percent of the things people worry about never happen. Forty percent. That's astronomical. Thirty percent of past events that cannot be changed. Those are the things people worry about. Yesterday's problems. You can't go back and change yesterday's problems. Why are you worrying about it? So we're up to 70% already. 12% are over needless health concerns. You know, oh, i got a pain over here. I need to, oh. That could be from golf, but I don't know. 12% needless health concerns. 10% are over trifles, just little things that, that really don't matter. That leaves 8% of the things you and I worry about as potential things to worry about. 8%. You can go to heaven first class or second class. You want to go first class, trust in the Lord and don't be afraid. Don't let that 8% weigh you down. Uh, Secondly, not only can you, should you, trust God when you worry and you don't even know what it worries you, you need to trust God when and this is true for many of you, when you fear so much you can't go to sleep at night. Now, let me just say, this is an honest situation. Perhaps you are a widow, and the protection you always felt with your husband around is not there now. And you're having trouble sleeping at night because you're just fearful, you're concerned. Well, the Bible says, trust in the Lord and do good. And that's hard to do until you can pinpoint the situations in your life where you should do it. And one of them is to trust God when you're too afraid to go to sleep. You know, the great author, Victor Hugo, said, when you have accomplished your daily task, go to sleep in peace because God is awake. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. He is awake all the time. So 
There may be reasons why we have difficulty sleeping at night. We live in a society that lives with those reasons. But one of them should not be worry because God says, I'll keep watch over you even when you're asleep. So when you go back to your room tonight, please don't do it in the next few minutes, but when you go back to your room tonight, sleep well, friends, sleep well. Uh, one of my favorite books, it's out of print now, and I wish it were not. It's uh, a book entitled Eternity Shut Up in a Span. The man who wrote its name is William Marshall. And as I say, it's, it's a terrific book. It's out of print. You can hardly even get a copy. I've tried several times. And uh, you know how it is when you go to, after books that are pretty rare? Uh, the first bid on eBay is like $179 for a $9.95 book. So, you know, I haven't bought this book yet, but I have read it. And there's this great story in William Marshall's book, Eternity Shot Up in a Span, about a woman who was always concerned about burglars. I mean, night after night, it was her concern that every little creak downstairs, every little noise she heard has to be a burglar. And she was constantly waking her husband and saying, there's somebody down there. And he dutifully would go down and check it out, you know. But one night, there was a creak downstairs in the darkness, and then a crash. And she said to her husband, there's a burglar downstairs. Well, he got up, took the ball bat with him, went downstairs and went room to room in the darkness looking for an obvious person in the house. And suddenly he came face to face with the burglar. And when he did, the burglar took off for the front door. But the man was closer to the door. He stood in front of the door and stopped the burglar from going out. And he said to the burglar this, you're not going anywhere. My wife has been looking for you for 10 years and you're coming upstairs to meet her. <laughs> now, Uh, that's, that's a pretty extreme example of not being able to go to sleep because you worry about things. Trust in the Lord. It's not just an expression you hang on the wall. It's the way you live your life. You don't control much of what's in your life, so you have to give it over to the person who does. Trust in the Lord and do good. In this first clip, Dr. Curl talks about trusting in the Lord and finding real confidence in Him. Um, he also talks about one of the side effects of not trusting in Him is worry. Uh, I found this message very timely. When you think about he recorded this message over two years ago, um, and he actually used the phrase facing the future mm. with confidence. Um, when I look at our current world, uh, when I turn on the news and I look at our cur current political climate, um, I must tell you that I have the tendency to worry. Well, I, I, I can relate to that because my grandmother was the best worrier. In fact, we often joke with her that if uh, we wanted to have somebody worry about it, we'd give her the subject and she could worry. She could take it to the nth degree mm -hmm. in terms of figuring out all the scenarios. Uh, Somebody said that worry is assuming responsibility that God never intended us to have. And the opposite of worry is trust. Mm. And that's sort of what we're leading into as we think about this summer. It's trusting. Trusting God. In fact, my word for the year is trust. Uh, it's easy to trust when things are going well. Mm. It's even more challenging when things are not going well. But God wants us to trust Him with everything. Mm. Not just some things, not with most things, but to trust Him in everything. Great. Let's take a listen to the second clip. So trust in the Lord when you don't know what you're worrying about. Trust in the Lord if you can't sleep at night because you worry. Trust in the Lord when you don't understand what he wants you to do because you're kind of in the fog of experience, you know? Uh, everything is a little misty in your life. Uh, you're looking for the will of God and you don't know what it is. Uh, we've all been there. I... Uh, <laughs> I spent some time in my life in uh, the state of Virginia. I was actually the dean of the School of Religion at Liberty University back in the early days of that school. And my wife and I thought we'd be there forever. So uh, we built a house. We built exactly what we wanted. It wasn't very expensive, but it was a nice house and it was what we wanted. 
And the night we moved into our house, we knelt by the bed, both of us, and we gave the house to the Lord. We said, Lord, this is your house. We'll have joy clubs here. We'll have five-day clubs here. This will be a lighthouse for you in this community. Lord, if you want this house, take it. It's your house. We give it to you. Now, you've got to be careful when you tell the Lord things like that. Because 15 months later, an institution that I love dearly contacted me and said, would you consider coming back as the president? Now, I had graduated from there, and I had taught there. And I really didn't want to go back because it's warm in Virginia. It's cold in New York. So they said, well, at least consider it. I said, I can't consider it, but I can do this. I can come, meet with the board, and tell you the kind of man I think you need to hire. You know, the kind of person who would be a good president for your college. So I did. I went up, met with the board, and spent several hours just kind of laying out the leadership that I thought they needed for the ministry there. And they dismissed me, and I went over to the student center to get some coffee. And suddenly a board member shows up and said, would you come back to the meeting? So I did. I told them, you know, here's the kind of man you need. I am not that man. When I entered the meeting, everyone stood up. They said, we just unanimously elected you our new president. <laughs> you can't do that. My first church did the same thing to me. I was just supplying the pulpit, and they said, we had our annual business meeting last night, and you're our new pastor. I said, that's not your way you do things. You know? oh, no. So I, uh, I was in the fog of experience myself. Lord, do I stay here or do I go? Lord, give me your, give me your clear insight, because I don't want to make a mistake in my life at this point. And I even got down to making lists, you know. Reasons to go, reasons to stay. And then I'd count them up, and there'd be 26 here and 26 here. You know, just... I mean, it's, it's a struggle knowing the will of God in our lives sometimes. And, and a lot of times we worry about it because it's not so clear to us. There's, there's a bit of a fog in our lives. Finally, I said, Lord, I, I don't know. I just don't know. My wife and I talked about it, and she said... Um, is there somebody else here who might do your job? And I said, yeah, there's lots of people here who can do what I do. She said, well, what about at the college? And I said, no, probably not. So we went, and I said, Lord, you're going to have to confirm to me afterwards, after the fact that this is the right decision. I'm going to trust in the Lord and not be afraid. I want to go to heaven first class, folks. We made that decision. It was the right decision. It did, however, take three years and three months for my house in Virginia to sell. It was brand new. Adequately priced. We locked the door, walked away from it, said, here it is, Lord, take care of it. And he did. Three years and three months he took care of it. Finally, after 10 years at the college, Back to the Bible contacted me, and I was in the throes again of being in the fog of experience. When we finally made the decision to move to Nebraska to be a part of the radio uh, ministry, I said, Lord, remember that incident uh, 10 years ago where it took three years and three months to sell my house? Whatever the lesson was you wanted to teach me, I'm sure I learned it. We don't have to go through this again. <laughs> and God was good. This time it took three years and four months to sell our house. <laughs> now, you know what I've learned through these experiences? I made a house payment in Virginia and a rent payment in New York, the total of which was more than my salary at the college. And I never missed a payment other place. Where did the money come from? I don't know, but I got a suspicion. <laughs> Go to heaven first class, friends. Trust the Lord and don't be afraid. That's what he's getting at here in verse 3. 
Don't make this the motto of your life. Make it the lifestyle of your life. Trust in the Lord. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Just a little poem I loved. I want to read it to you here. It says, there was a very cautious man who never laughed or played. He never risked. He never tried. He never sang or prayed. And when he one day passed away, his insurance was denied. For since he never really lived, they claimed he never died. <laughs> you can go to heaven first class or second class. David is appealing to you to trust in the Lord and do good. Do it first class. Don't fret because of evildoers. Don't get jealous or envious of those who prosper wickedly. Instead, just trust in the Lord and do good. Well, we can trust in the Lord. You know, the expression trust in the Lord occurs 15 times in the Bible. The first time is found in 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 20, 2, 22 and, and verse 30. This is when Sennacherib, the, the great general, is surrounding the city of Jerusalem and He's about to overrun the city of Jerusalem. It's said of King Hezekiah that he trusted in the Lord. The last time the expression is used in the Old Testament is Isaiah chapter 36, verse 7 and verse 15. And guess what the account is there? It's the same account. Sennacherib surrounding the city of Jerusalem and Hezekiah, the king, trusting in the Lord. These are kind of like bookends. To all the times God says to us, trust in the Lord. If Hezekiah were here tonight, he'd be a remarkable guy living that long. But if he were here tonight, he would tell you, go to heaven first class. In the second clip, Dr. Kroll talks about how we need to trust God in the fog of our life. Um, it can be very difficult in times to see God's will. I know that's always a, a hot topic to talk about. What's God's will for my life? And sometimes it can be difficult. But he calls us to trust him through that situation. Sometimes it's hard to... You, sometimes you feel like there are days where you just can't even put one foot in front of the other. Um, there doesn't seem to be a way out. It, life becomes so ominous. I think about some of our staff that have gone through really difficult times. We have one of our chaplains... Uh, mm. who lost a daughter at age 37, and they're walking through a really dark time right now. But, but as he, as we yield to him and we trust him, he seems to make a way when there doesn't seem to be a way. I love this quote. Joyce actually sings the song, when we don't understand, when we can't see his plan, when we can't trace his hand, we can trust his heart. Mm. That's what he wants from us. Great. Let's take a listen to the final clip. Well, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord for things you don't understand. Trust in the Lord when you're in the fog of your experience. But you need to trust the Lord God for your future as well. Because, you know, the future is in his hands, but it's not always on our calendar. Sometimes things happen to us that we don't anticipate. Last Tuesday evening, one week ago tomorrow night, I was speaking at the Bible conference in Pennsylvania, and three pastors were asked to get up and tell the funniest thing that happened to them in their ministry. And one dear gentleman, older pastor, retired now, got up and he started talking about how God saved him and led him through his life and how God had been with him all the way through his life. And we're all kind of scratching our heads saying, which, which the funny part here, you know? <laughs> but he finally got to the funny part and he told us that. And I'm so glad he gave his testimony and said how the Lord had been with him all his life. Because about 10 minutes into my message, he slumped over in his chair. Some nurses put him on the floor, did CPR vigorously for 20 minutes, but he did not survive. I thought, what a glorious thing. Go to heaven from a meeting like this, having just given your testimony of how God has been with you all the days of your life. 
Trust in the Lord and do good. So you need to trust God for your future as well. You need to trust God when you can't see what the future is. And that's most of the time, isn't it? Mary Brainerd said, I would rather walk with God in the dark than go alone in the light. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Psalm 16, verse 1. Preserve me, O God, for in thee I put my trust. Trust in the Lord and do good. You need to trust God when you can't see the future. You need to trust God when it comes to the last days of your life. This becomes extremely um, real to me for, because of the incident last week. Psalm 23, you know it well, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Isn't it great to know when you come to that last breath that you're not alone and that the future is secure and the God you trusted all the days of your life, you can trust this day as well? So David says, look, don't be envious of ungodly people. They're going to get cut down like the grass. Instead, trust in the Lord and do good. And now God always delights in nothing more than to be trusted by us. I and mean, he loves us to worship him and to praise him. But for us to show our trust in him, imagine what that's got to be like for God. It's like your children showing how much they trust you. George MacDonald said, to be trusted is a greater compliment than to be loved. Now, I love my wife and my family. Some years ago, I was flying from Atlanta to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it was a U.S. Air flight taking off from Atlanta. And when we took off from Atlanta, the, the runway uh, either had a whole lot of potholes in it or something was wrong because it was really a rough takeoff. And about 15 or 20 minutes into the flight, the pilot came on and he said, well, you probably noticed our takeoff was a little bit rough. And we all looked at one another and said, yeah. <laughs> he said, well, uh, we're not certain whether the nose gear, the wheel in the front, is up or down. And if it's down, we're not certain it's locked in place. So here's what we're going to do. He thinks this is helping us somehow. He says, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a flyover of the tower in Pittsburgh. And they're going to do a visual inspection of the plane and tell us whether or not we can land. And I'm thinking, what is the alternative to landing? Now, you have to imagine, my mind is just uh, operating in awful places, weird places, but it's very consistently operating. And when he says, we're going to do a flyby, this is my vision of a flyby. Boom! And they're going to see if our gear is down, right? Well, obviously, um, we landed safely, but... People didn't know that on the plane. Let me just tell you how things played out. Most of the people on the plane thought we were going to die. In fact, there were people screaming on the plane. The, the flight attendants were trying to calm them down. And I must have been quite an anomaly on that plane because I was sitting uh, next to the window and there was no one next to me in the flight. And I'm sitting there with my arms crossed at perfect peace. And I prayed for my wife, I prayed for my family, I prayed for my ministry, and I said, Lord, if this is my time to come to see you, I'm ready to come. Amen. And people are screaming at the top of their lungs, and I am sitting over here in perfect peace. And it's not because I'm brave. <laughs> it's because I've learned how to go to heaven first class. Trust in the Lord and do not be afraid. You know what? It saves you a lot of medical bills and over-the-counter drugs 
if you simply trust to the Lord and do good. Well, we landed safely, and there were a lot of fire trucks there waiting for us, and everyone had a story to tell after that, but I had a story of peace and contentment when the others had a story of terror and horror. Well, the Lord tells us, trust in the Lord and do good. And there, there are two possible responses that you and I can make tonight to his command to us to trust in the Lord. By the way, you did recognize there is a second part to that. Trust in the Lord and do good. I mean, this is, this is the classic example of faith and works. Trust in the Lord, and while you're trusting in him, be active in doing the right thing. Faith and works. So, trust in the Lord and do good. And we can respond in one of two ways to that command of the Lord God. We can say, all right, I will trust in the Lord and I will do good. And therefore, verse 3, I will dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Feed on his faithfulness. I love that expression. The other side of that is we can fail to trust in the Lord and as a result not dwell in the land and not feed on his faithfulness. That doesn't mean we lose our salvation. It just means we're miserable while we're saved. That's not second class, friends. That's about fifth class. That's like taking a train from Mumbai to Delhi which if you've never done, I suggest you don't ever try. <laughs> dwell in the land. That's the promise of provision. You know, dwell in the land, God's going to provide for your needs from the land that he gives you. In our case, glory land. And be fed. That's his promise of protection. The word for feed there is the same word for shepherd. He's going to shepherd us through this weary land. We have only good things to look forward to if we trusted the Lord and do good. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I am not going to worry. I'm not going to want. I'm not going to fear. I'm committed to trusting him even when it doesn't make a lot of sense to trust God. And this is where the real discipline comes in the Christian life. It's easy to trust God when he says, here are two paths, both of them are good, take your pick. But when he says, uh, there are two paths and I'm not going to tell you which one is right, then you have to really learn how to trust the Lord. I read about a tourist. I, I don't know if this is... Uh, I'm going to guess this is a spurious story. But I read about a tourist who was at the Grand Canyon. And apparently not in an authorized area. And he was at the edge of the rim of the Grand Canyon, got a little too close, and fell over. And just as he disappeared over the rim, there was kind of a scraggly bush growing out from the side of the wall of the Grand Canyon. And he, he grabbed a hold of it, and it stopped his fall. But he can't climb back up. He's holding on for dear life. And the only thing he can do is call for help. But there's nobody around. So in his desperation, he says, is there anybody up there? Anybody who can help me? And this deep, booming voice from heaven says, yes, I think I can help you. And he says, I, I'm, I've fallen here and I can't get out of the canyon. And God says to him, well, uh, that's a problem. I understand that. Do you have faith? And the man says, yes, I have faith. God says, do you have strong faith? Yes, I have strong faith. Are you trusting me? Yes, I trust you. And the voice says, if you trust me, just let go of the bush and I'll catch you. 
To which the man said, Is there anybody else up there? <laughs> See, it really doesn't matter what we say, does it? Matters whether we show God we trust Him or not. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Instead, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Don't you love the verbs? Do not fret. Do not be envious. Trust in the Lord. Do good. Dwell. Feed. You can go to heaven first class. Or you can go to heaven second class. My prayer for all of you is that we'll all choose to go first class. In this last clip, Dr. Kroll talks about the blending of faith and works. Uh, he reads Psalm 37 that says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Uh, he makes the point that there's two ways of reacting to the verse. Um, to do just that, to trust in him. Or the opposite, to not trust in the Lord and live a pretty miserable Christian walk. It's interesting because it, it's easy sometimes to preach it. Mm. It's another thing to actually do it yourself. And uh, one of the stories of Dr. Kroll's personal life that I love is the story of his grandson Thaddeus. Thaddeus was born uh, without ears. Uh, he has been on a feeding tube since he was a baby. Uh, he couldn't swallow, so he had to have food on a feeding tube. Uh, very poor uh, hearing, he, autism, I mean, all kinds of issues. I mean, and now he's like 14, 15 years of age. And I remember Dr. Kroll saying to his kids, if we can't trust him in this, mm. then we can't trust him in anything. And uh, I want to encourage our listeners, if you want to get a copy of this video, at the DVD, The Story of Thaddeus, we're going to actually give this to them for free. Huh? Great. Uh, if you will call us today, 1-800-453-7942. Uh, we'd love to get this in your hands. It, it's a great illustration of how you can trust God, even in the midst of a huge storm in your life. And mm. I know it will be a blessing. And it also introduce the folks to the heart of Dr. Woodrow Kroll. Absolutely. I remember being there that day, he mm. shared that story, and there wasn't a dry eye in the house. So that would be a great resource. I want to thank you for joining us this month on Discovering Victory. Uh, if this message impacted you in a special way, we want to hear from you. We love your feedback. Uh, you can leave a comment on our YouTube channel, uh, on our Facebook page, or email us at info at org. Also, if you want more information about any of the events we talked about in this month's podcast, our Family Freedom Walk happening on May 7th, or our Memorial Day Weekend Conference happening May 27th through the 30th, you can also visit our website at www.americaskeswick.org. I want to thank you for joining us and ask you to keep discovering victory. This month on Discovering Victory. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs>